Welcome to Just a Minute. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Nicholas Parsons, and as the minute walls fades away, once more it's my pleasure to welcome our many listeners throughout the world, but also to welcome to the program four talented and exciting players of this game. And they are seated on my right, a very talented comedian, a comedy writer, uh, an all-round good egg, and that is Tony Hawks. And seated beside him, a brilliant writer, a humorous entertainer, after dinner speaker, and also an actor, and that's Giles Brandreth. And seated on my left, we have, coming all the way down from Glasgow, that lovely stand-up comedian and brilliant comedy writer, Janie Godley. And seated beside her, somebody who lives in Norfolk, so it's great to have someone from this area here, a wonderful cabaret artist, brilliant lyric writer, and this is, of course, Kit Hesketh Harvey. Please welcome all four of them. <laughs> Beside me sits Trudy Stevens, who's going to help me keep the score, and she will blow a whistle when the 60 seconds are up. And as usual, I'm going to ask these four to speak at some time on the subject I will give them, and they will try and do that without hesitation, repetition, or deviation. And this particular edition of Just a Minute is coming from the Corn Exchange in that delightful Norfolk town of Kings Lynn. So let's uh, begin the show with Tony Hawks. Oh, and what an apt subject to begin with, because this show has just celebrated 40 years. <laughs> Which is, of course, a ruby anniversary. So I think Tony should begin with the subject of ruby anniversary. Tony, you have 60 seconds as usual, and your time starts now. What a great honour it is to be given this subject, given that today... Uh, Charles challenged. Repetition of given. Yes. <laughs> you were given too much. Oh, that's to extraordinary. That yes. was a, I only did about eight words and I repeated it, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, Giles, that's a correct challenge. You get a point for a correct challenge. You take over the subject. There are 56 seconds still available and it's Ruby anniversary starting now. It is 40 years since I first met Nicholas Parsons, who was then a matinee idol, a young Adonis. <laughs> It was at a party organized by Fanny Craddock with Lionel Blair as the entertainment. They were known as Butch Casserole and the One Dance Kid. <laughs> and Nicholas was there in all his glory. Tony, you've challenged. Uh, repetition of Nicholas. Yeah. Yeah, but you can't have too much of a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was enjoying it, Giles. I'd like to give you a bonus point for that, but it was a correct challenge. So within the rules of just a minute, Tony, you get a point. You take back the subject. 40 seconds, Ruby anniversary starting now. Today is the anniversary of myself and Ruby behind the bike sheds. Outside Goldstone Junior School many years ago. Every year I celebrate this, a wonderful occasion in my life when I learnt some important skills which I won't go into here, although useful it would be to me in filling valuable seconds. Good. Um, Charles, you're challenged again. Well, it was just the valuable seconds, which I imagine is what it was. <laughs> <laughs> but do you also have a, a challenge within the rules of just a minute? Mm. Well, I think it's deviation to talk about underage sex on Radio 4. Mm. <laughs> we didn't, he didn't establish it was underage. Well, either that, he was very stupid still to be at a junior school age over 16. <laughs> <laughs> Giles, who mm. said anything about sex? Uh, what were you doing behind the bike sheds? Well, I'll tell you if you give me the subject yeah, yeah, yeah. back. <laughs> he was exploring, but not uh, in, uh, oh. indulging. Right. Um, but, Giles, we, we did enjoy your interruption, so I think you deserve a bonus point for that. But uh, Tony was interrupted, so he gets a point for that, of course. Keeps the subject. 17 seconds. Ruby anniversary starting now. Ruby and I read quietly for over a minute. <laughs> it was an extraordinary occasion, and one I am delighted to share with you all here. Uh, Giles challenge. A repetition of the word share. Earlier on he said yes, there were details he, he wouldn't share with this that's audience. That's right, he wanted to share their experience with us. <laughs> oh, so, he's really so, determined. Well, listen you, listen, you may boo, but those are the rules of just a minute. <laughs> Uh, Giles, eight seconds still. Ruby anniversary starting now. The Ruby anniversary that I refer to was like the meeting of Lord Alfred Douglas and Oscar Wilde, or Henry Stanley and Dr. Livingston, or even Andy Pandy and Luby Lou. Uh, and Tony Stanley just before the whistle. Well, there were three oars in a row. Normally we let three oars in a row. Uh, no, we don't like too many oars on this uh, show. Uh, Yes, I'm inclined always to let two go, but three, I think, is repetition. That's, so that you, seems to be you clever rule. clogs, have got in with half a second to go. <laughs> <laughs> a 
our Ruby anniversary starting now. Lulu once said... <laughs> so, in this game, whoever is speaking when the whistle goes gains an extra point, and it was uh, uh, um, Tony Hawk's... So let's go to Kit Hesketh Harvey to begin the next round. Kit. Oh, good one to follow, yes. What? Words per minute. Applicable to this show, and certainly applicable to you. You have many words in your lyrics. Would you please talk on that subject, starting now? In the 1950s, when women knew their place, their skills were judged by their proficiency with cake, box pleating, and words per minute. Thank goodness that situation has now changed. <laughs> I am afraid my words per minute are not very good. I use two fingers, as I do with many things, measuring whiskey or addressing tax inspectors. But I suppose... <laughs> The most important thing is that it should be about 30 words per minute. What it is on just a minute, I have no idea. I suspect that at the moment I'm not doing very well, but I'm trying to eke it out for as long as I can because here I am in front of an audience who know me personally and know how many words per minute I'm generally forced to utter. Yes, Janie, you challenged. <laughs> trying to see how long his lungs would go. <laughs> <laughs> you must have little wee gills in your back there. I know. It did you... say the word no twice. There, you spotted it. Well done, Jenny. Yes, no. it did. <laughs> uh, there we are. So, uh, Janie, you've got a correct challenge there. And you have 17 seconds. You've got a point, of course. You take over the subject. Words per minute starting now. I have a baby toddler called Abby who can at least speak 700 words per minute. Children shouldn't be allowed to say that many words in one long sentence. I have listened to my own daughter speak 8 million words since she was born. There is a limit to what mothers have to listen to. At any point... <laughs> So Janie Godley was then speaking as a whistle wind gained that extra point for doing so. And she's moved forward into third place behind Giles and Tony and Kit's behind them. And Janie, we'd like you to start the next round. The subject is, it'll all come out in the wash. A good subject, plenty of words, <laughs> 60 seconds, starting now. Sometimes you assume a stain will come out in the wash until you put it into the washing machine and you wait patiently. After 40 minutes of a cycle, you drag the offending object out, have a good stare at it and think to yourself, that never really did come out in the wash after all. Bleach isn't a good idea to pour onto jam when you think it'll take it away. The other thing you shouldn't ever assume will come out in the wash is when you hide a secret in your past, like I once did when I killed a rabbit when I was five. I never thought anybody would suspect it was me until a cousin who was alive at the time, he was a grass. <laughs> He came up and told everyone the rabbit died because... <laughs> <laughs> Tony Hawk's challenge. Rabbit genocide. <laughs> I was calling the police. <laughs> <laughs> I was five. Uh, right, okay. I think it's too late. I think they were involved, but they let her off. Yes, I think there was a re repetition of rabbit in there. Yes, there was a repetition of rabbit. We could, we could have had that rabbiting on for ages if you like. We <laughs> not enjoyed it so much. Um, Tony, you've got another point. You've got a, the subject, and you've got 18 seconds still available. It'll all come out in the wash starting now. I like to come out in the wash on a boat, on the estuary, marvellous it is, and I will row all through the day, and people will shout out, he's come out on the wash, there he is. Perhaps it'll all come out. Uh, Kit challenged. It was come out in the wash, and he said come out on the wash. That's right, it's it, the assembly it, it, all come out in the wash, in and you were on the wash. Yes. Uh, it was all lies, nice. anyway. They, they enjoyed it very much. <laughs> and, um, but the trouble is that it didn't happen to King John, did it? And, um, oh, there's a few historians in the audience. <laughs> So, Kit, a correct challenge, a point, five seconds still available. It'll all come out in the wash starting now. Hill gay, worm gay, gate and gay wood. Uh, Giles, challenge. Well, uh, repetition of gay, because of the origin of these names... Yes, yes, uh, you You're not winning me. many friends in this audience at the moment, Giles. <laughs> yes? You're saying it's all one word. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yes, they're all one word. No, no, it's he telling you. The whole of the audience is telling yeah. you. This is them. Yes, it, it does appear you brought your people with you. Good <laughs> 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 
Local knowledge gained you that point for an incorrect challenge, and you still have three seconds, uh, Kit. Uh, it'll all come out in the wash starting now. The wash is fed by a complicated system of dikes who discharge into it, and I think if you're going to come out, this is a very good point. So Kit has Kazavi was speaking as a whistle wind gained that extra point, and it's all pretty even uh, um, spread out between. There's only one point, actually, that separates all five of them. Five, four, three, two, that's all. And <laughs> you work out which has got which points. Giles, um, your turn to begin. The subject, trial and error. Tell us something about that in this game, starting now. At his trial in 1895, Oscar Fingal Oflaharty Wills Wilde made a fatal error, not when he was cross-examined about the house in which the alleged offences took place and asked whether Cowley Street was a respectable address and replied that it might well be, but perhaps not since it was so near the House of Commons, but when the prosecuting counsel... Tony Challenge. Uh, repetition of House. house. Oh, house. yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's like that, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Giles, Giles, mm -hmm. it's always been like that. <laughs> I think that's what we all agreed to do when we came out here. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Right. So, Unless, um, yes, it's correct yes. challenge, 39 seconds available. Trial and error, starting now. I have always been one who favours trial and error whenever doing anything, which is why I never made it into the bomb disposal department. <laughs> I tried many occasions, and they always said, no, Tony, not today. I went to a court case to see if there would be an error at a trial, and there have been significant errors in the past. I won't go into them now, because it will possibly be too... Uh, J Jenny, you challenged. Yes, errors. He said errors twice. He did say errors twice. Yes, he did. Error on the card. Yes. yes. And it's trial and error. Yes, and I noticed that. Mm, there's deviation. <laughs> That's, that's it, so Janie, I know you haven't played the game as often as the others, but my gosh, you listen. Um... <laughs> I was writing down all the words at the beginning, all the words he's saying. Darling, there isn't time in this I game know. to write the words And then down. I realised I've just did a funny drawing of a castle, and that yeah. wasn't really what I set out to do. And you challenged yeah. for castle, which no, wouldn't it was, at it all. was errors. Errors. Yeah, right. You have 14 seconds Great. for you to tell us something about trial and error starting now. I was at a trial and there was an error. I once got caught with quite a lot of weapons in my house. You think I'm joking, read the book. And there I was, and everybody was laughing at me. And when I actually got to court, the big trial was actually happening. At, yeah. Oh, jazz challenge. Repetition of action. Yes, yes actually, I yes. do see actually quite a lot, actually. Mm. Could, um, <laughs> Janie, would you mind slowing down? I can't write all these words down. <laughs> <laughs> And you have naughtily or cleverly got in with one second to go, Giles. Sure. Uh, trial and error, one second still available, Giles, starting now. When you move to Lynn, it's very important to find your house. Oh. <laughs> so Giles was speaking then as a whistle wend. He's now equal in the lead with Tony Hawkes and Kit Hesketh Harvey and Janie Godley are equal in second place just behind them. Uh, Tony, we're back with you to start, and the subject is the end of the road. Tell us something about that subject in this game starting now. Keep right on to the end of the road is a song that I remember hearing in my youth and never want to again, which is why I've stopped so succinctly and beautifully, and you can almost hear the sound of me not... Oh, what is that? <laughs> Giles, pity <laughs> that he wasn't able to go on singing know, because he so, was doing it so yeah. beautifully, as he said. But you said that, therefore you're going to have hesitation. Hesitation. Do you know, it's very interesting. That's the first hesitation challenge we've had in this show. Normally they come quite quickly. Yeah. Do you realise that? We're you couldn't close. care less, could you? Yeah. Right. <laughs> anyway, hesitation is correct challenge, Giles. It's with you, 46 seconds, the end of the road starting now. During the 1997 general election, I knew that I'd reached the end of the road when my wife put our house up on the market during the campaign itself. <laughs> there was further humiliation for me because I felt the end of the road was there at the foot of every street. The ghastly things that happened to me. I went to open a doctor's surgery. I was invited to unveil a plaque. I did so and I read the words... Uh, Kit Challenge. He's, he did it on awe, didn't he? And he's, he's had lots of eyes. I mean, I know he's a politician, but really. I did this and I did uh, that. Uh, what do you think? What do I think? I think you're right. Well, he did it for awe, you see. Ordinarily, I'd let it go, but, but, but yes, there were since a he's large playing a hard number game. of eyes. Yes. 
too many eyes, eyes, so we let you get away with two or three, but in four or five, no. Right. Um, Kit Hesketh, are they? The correct challenge, a point. Thank you. And 26 seconds, end of the road starting now. Here we are at the end of the A10, and the end of the road might imply that this was in some way a derelict place. It's not. Kings Lynn is the most beautiful town filled with architectural glory. House, which Pevsner said is the finest building in England, Queen Street. What need I say? It's a great place to come out. Uh, Tony Challenge. <laughs> Were there two streets in there? Was yes. It? Did yes, I there were. Yes, I think I'm the first sorry. street. Yeah, the no, first street, yes. Listen. He got carried I'm, away. I'm right with you. He was it's playing difficult. to his audience it's and they were encouraging him. Yes. Tony, ten seconds available. The end of the road starting now. If life is a journey, which it surely is, then why are we in a hurry to get to the end of the road? Yet you see people rushing every day of their lives. What are they thinking of? They should... <laughs> The Tony Hawks was then speaking as the whistle went, gained that extra point. He's now one ahead of Giles Brandreth. Then comes Kit and then Janie in that order. And Kit, it's, uh, I think, back with you to start. The subject now is animal attraction. Kit, 60 seconds starting now. You look at Nicholas Parsons, suave, debonair, oddly sexless, but what you cannot tell, <laughs> Lordies, is that he's emitting pheromones as a scent of man musk coming over towards me, which means that he is very attractive to animals. Back in his hotel, it's like living with Virginia McKenna or Bill Oddie. You think that's white hair. It's a snowy owl that's actually landed on his head. He's got a dick dick in his blazer pocket, and I think it's an eel going up his trouser leg. I can't be sure. However, Janie, you challenge. He said he's about three times. Yes, I know. I've been hoisted by my petard now. Yes, I liked it. I liked it. I liked it all because the eel bit got exciting. <laughs> 29 seconds still available, um, Janie. Animal attraction starting now. I don't like animals. They frighten me. I once saw a crocodile in a friend's bath. You think I'm kidding? Read the book. And there I was looking at a big tiger. But zoos are horrible places to keep animals. There is no attraction in animal attraction with zoos. You see an... Uh, Tony Challenge. Uh, repetition of zoos. By the way, what, what is the book called? It's, it's a great wee book. Sense. I read it's all about a time of Glasgow. And, she's up there. Yeah. and I know, because I was up there as myself at the same time. Oh, and I was, one of the, I was I was walking up there. I was I claimed one. <laughs> No, I never met Janie till later, but it all came back to me when I read a book. Oh, it's great. I worked with a fella, so I told her that, you know, it's another big night, that big angry bastard. Here you come out here, I'll take it's you. It's me that you does said. this to him. It's me. <laughs> he she just sets me off, right? Giles. Hello. Back to the English. <laughs> This is excellent. The was subject this, was is... you interrupted? Uh, you were interrupted, had a correct... No, it was Tony, was No, but I'm ready to... I th I, I, we did it simultaneously. It was a long time ago. I it was a right. long... <laughs> like, it was 40 years ago <laughs> that you first began that Glaswegian story. <laughs> And we've enjoyed the edited highlights over the past four no, decades. No, I delivered it in different ways. That was not, I've never said that before in that particular way. Uh, and there's no reason why, uh, just shut up, let's get on with the show. <laughs> Animal Attraction um, is with you, Tony, and there are 13 seconds available starting now. I was once attracted to an animal whilst hitching Ireland with a fridge. Read the book. Anyway. Yay! Giles, you challenge. I'd programmed myself to buzz when I heard the phrase, read the book. But yes. <laughs> and the wrong person said it. <laughs> uh, deviation. Uh, we've all read the book. It was a number one bestseller. I'm never going to say it ever again till I die, I promise. Don't worry, you plugged your book, yes. Yes. Around Excellent Ireland with book. a fridge, really right. Book. And it's, you've got a, an incorrect challenge. Eight seconds are still available, Tony. Animal attraction starting now. Dogs are very attractive creatures. There's no denying. Pets, oh. Uh, <laughs> Kit challenge. Uh, he found it and said, yes. oh, we, we call that hesitation. Yes, so, yes, Kit, yes. you have three seconds. You tell us something about animal attraction starting now. Underneath that table, Nicholas has got an aardvark, a bison, <laughs> a camel, <laughs> a dick dick. <laughs> After the show, Kit, you must tell me something about this association with animals and me, which I don't understand. Uh, <laughs> let me give you the situation. Who was there? Oh, Kit was speaking as the whistle went, gained that extra point. He's moved into third place just ahead of Janie. He's one behind Giles, and he's two or three behind Tony Hawks, who's in the lead. And Janie, we're back with you. Can you tell us something about fortune tellers? That's the subject. You have 60 seconds as usual, starting now. 
I went to see a fortune teller once and she told me I was going to marry Donny Osmond. <laughs> Foolishly, I was 14 and believed every word she said, converted to being a Mormon, gave up caffeine and fizzy pop, brushed my teeth really brightly and headed off to Salt Lake City. <laughs> Disappointment greeted me when I arrived in the place. Donny Osmond was not available. Why did I say that again? I know, it's so a So many Osmonds to choose I from. Know. Yes. <laughs> You're right. Uh, so, Giles, you challenge first. Repetition. Uh, yes, of, of Donny Osmond. Osmond. You can't get enough of Donny Osmond, though. No, no, no. But in this game, unfortunately, you can't. <laughs> so 38 seconds available for you, Giles, on Fortune Tellers starting now. I was expecting this subject to crop up because I am blessed with second sight. It is not a squint, it is a gift. But, mm. Did you know that I was going to buzz you? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny, no, because I haven't read the book. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny, that, uh, that challenge definitely deserves a bonus point, but you, you haven't got a challenge when the no. rules are just a minute. No. So Giles was interrupted. He gets a point. He has 31 seconds. Fortune tellers starting now. I went to see the most amazing fortune teller in a wonderful place called the Fairstead Estate. <laughs> I was in this extraordinary gypsy lady who had moved out from Whiz Beach. She wanted to improve herself and thought that she was the lovely lady of Lynn who could take my palm. <laughs> Kit challenged. There'd be lots of ladies in there. Yes. And lots of oh, no, ladies. no, no, one. Yeah, there was a Ladies couple. and there was a lady. That's right. Ah. Ladies, yes. Ah. Oh, yes. I'm so sorry. But you'll want to know I'm about so her. Sorry. Yes. I'm glad you were listening to what you were saying. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> So, Giles, you have an incorrect challenge. You have 15 seconds. Fortune tellers starting now. Oh, my crystal balls, she said, <laughs> reaching for her monkey who was on her shoulder, who would come out from the city centre in order to help her take my digits one by one, pull them longer and examine the... Uh, oh, yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, my digits one, one by one. one. <laughs> That's right. You made, a, you made a ghastly error. Mm. I did. <laughs> I and did. you draw attention to it afterwards, Giles. So, I did. Uh, but Tony picked you up first. Six seconds, Tony. Fortune tellers are starting now. I'm something of a fortune teller, and I can... <laughs> Get your challenge. Bless him, but fortune teller. Fortune. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> What's I wrong? didn't know I was going to say that. That's for sure. <laughs> a fortune teller. Mm. That's rather nice, isn't it? Uh, so, um, <laughs> Kit, you've got fortune tellers. Four seconds are starting now. The Delphic Oracle used to sit on a tripod and smoke came out from her front bottom bits, which is a neat trick in anybody's book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let me give the scores. We move into that final round. Janie Godley, who hasn't played the show quite as often, but always gives great value, uh, is just lingering a little in fourth place. She's a wee bit behind Kit Esketh Harvey, who's um, trailing Giles Brandreth in second place. Uh, out in the lead, two points ahead of Giles, is Tony Hawks. Right, Giles, um, it's with you to start, and the subject now is A Cat in Hell. 60 seconds as usual, starting now. We have started to feed our pet cat a new kind of food, which is called curiosity. And the effect that it is having on the poor creature is dismal. Hell is how she feels at present. We have a menagerie at home, not just our little pussy, who is known as Fido, but also it's to confuse her, keep her on her toes, but also we have a dog. Tony Challenge. There was a repetition of also. There was a repetition of also, yeah. yes. And 38 seconds is now available for you, Tony, to tell us something about a cat in hell starting now. There will be people that say, I have not got a cat's hell in chance of complete... <laughs> So I've John, turned into Stanley Unwin. <laughs> I know, but it gets a laugh, doesn't it? Right. Kit, you challenge first. A cat in hell is with you. 33 seconds starting now. There is, of course, a cat in Nicola's underpants at the moment, which is suffering the, all the torments of hell. But hell is also the place in Norway, which is the centre of a jazz festival, accordion-based, and Radio 3 aficionados go there through the... Tony Challenge. The cat is not featuring enough in this for me. <laughs> They're going to be jazz cats who eventually. Yeah. Who oh, get, I'm yeah. Sorry, well, you see, possibly, I'm getting to it very roundabout, but no, enough. maybe I had deviated. No, I think you've got a little bit too far away I from a cat in hell. I think I just, Norway is a long Jazz festival in yeah. hell. 
uh, which I'm afraid. Right, deviation. Tony, back with you. 20 seconds. A cat in hell starting now. I have never been to hell, perhaps never will. Who knows? This panel may go there after this show. Such has been their terrible... Uh, Kit Challenge. We're going to Titchwell, and it's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody in the listeners other than the people in Norfolk know where Titchwell is. Yeah. But it I is true, I can... to go. It's beautiful. Right. No, we, I've actually been told we're going to have a meal at Titchwell after the show, so um, <laughs> if that's what you want to know, save all the letters coming in. Um, so what is your challenge? Uh, I'm sorry, I, deviation from the truth. Why? Because but, but, um, he said we're going to hell. I don't think technically he was deviating within the rules of just a minute. So, Tony, you have another point. You have 11 seconds starting now. Were I to be there, perhaps there would be a cat. A Giles Tarrant. A repetition of perhaps. perhaps. Yes, perhaps. Yes. Well done, uh, Giles. He did say perhaps before. You got in with nine seconds on a cat in hell starting now. I was advised by a priest when I was young that everybody goes to heaven. It's just that the bad people don't enjoy it. And I'm hoping that when I get to the other place, I will find pussycats galore. A cat in hell. <laughs> Let me give you the final situation. Janie Godley, whom we love having on the show, and it does so well, but she did finish in fourth place. But Kit Hesketh Harvey always does well, contributes magnificently. A brilliant third place. Giles uh, Brandreth, who always is great value in the show, in an amazing second place, but he was only one point behind Tony Hawk. So wouldn't it be fairer to say that Giles and Tony are our joint winners this week? Oh, oh no. yes. <laughs> So, it only remains for me to say thank you to these four delightful players of the game. Tony Hawks, Giles Brandreth, Janie Godley, and Kit Hesketh Harvey. I also thank Trudy Stevens, who's blown her whistle so well, and also... Are you taking some sort of betting bung on this, Nicholas? <laughs> <laughs> In what sense? Well, the person that's one point ahead at the end doesn't actually win. <laughs> Tony, you got your applause for that <laughs> extra point that you got. Now, I just thought, as a, I mean, we are competitive, but at the same time, we're generous. And yes, we... but a lot of people are betting on this game around the world now. <laughs> this All right, could, this let's could have be a round of applause for Tony Hawks, because he got one point more than Giles. <laughs> right? Justice is done, so to carry on with the wind-up, I also thank our producer, Tolusha Galani. We're indebted to Ian Messeter, who created this amazing game, and we're very indebted to this lovely audience here at the Corn Exchange in Kings Lynn, who've cheered us on our way. And I think they've enjoyed themselves. We have, I hope the listeners have, and they'll tune in again at the same time next week when we play Just a Minute! <laughs>